everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Doodling Through Education. For my CC students, this is cycle one, week seven, science. For everybody else, that just means that we are going to be talking about the different ways in which animals reproduce. So we're going to be talking about the two different types of sexual reproduction as well as the two different types of asexual reproduction. I just wanted to make a note that uh, to parents that um, I do not go in depth in these videos with how reproduction happens, but more a broad sense. And I leave that up to you as the parent to be able to decide what is appropriate to tell your child. So if you haven't already, go on and head on over to doodlingthrougheducation.com. There you'll find some workbooks that go along with these videos. They've been designed to match up with all of the videos that, have, that are posted on this YouTube page, and it will really help your student to expand their learning. Without further ado, let's start doodling. So today we are going to talk about the different ways that animals reproduce. Now, mainly there are two ways that animals reproduce, and then we can break down those two ways into two categories of case. The first way is through sexual reproduction, and this is where two parents come together and their offspring share genetic characteristics from each of the parents. The second way is through asexual reproduction. And in this type of reproduction, there is only ever one parent. And so when they have offspring, they are genetically the same to the parent. So knowing this, let's go ahead and jump in to sexual reproduction. The first type of sexual reproduction is through live birth. This is the type of reproduction that most mammals use. And this is where a baby will grow inside their mother until they are born. And when they are born, they are alive. They aren't in an egg or any type of capsule. Another characteristic of mammals besides live birth is that they feed their babies by making milk for them. This type of reproduction is called viviparity. Now besides live birth, there is another type of sexual reproduction where the offspring has two parents still, and that is through laying eggs. Animals that lay eggs are fish, reptiles, birds, and amphibians. And this is called oviparity. Now there is differences in the way that some of these animals lay eggs. For example, amphibians like frogs will lay eggs in the water to help keep their eggs wet as they develop. And then when these amphibians hatch, they undergo a type of metamorphosis where they turn from animals that live in the water with gills and fins to air-breathing adults with lungs and legs. And then there's reptiles, and reptiles will lay eggs on dry land, and due to this, they have a hard or leathery type shell to help protect their babies. I think it's also important to note that some invertebrates like insects also lay eggs, and this can look quite different between insects as well. For example, an earthworm, when they lay eggs, their young looks the same as they do, just a smaller version. Whereas, say, butterflies, when they hatch from their egg, they look completely different. They look, they are caterpillars and they have to go through a transformation stage called the pupa stage, where they then develop into the mature form, a butterfly. Next, let's go ahead and talk about asexual reproduction. Now remember, this is where there is only one parent. So how is this even possible? 
Well, the first way this is possible is through a process called fragmentation. This is where a parent organism can break into pieces or fragments. These pieces that fall off or are cut off of the parent organism will develop into a new animal and the parent will then regenerate the piece that they lost. This is also called splitting. So this new offspring organism is actually completely genetically identical to the parent. They have the same DNA. This can happen through many different ways. It can happen by choice. The animal may purposefully lose a piece of their body so that the offspring will develop from it, or it can happen from damage to the organism from predators or the environment. This is seen in many different types of organisms, but some that are familiar to you are sponges, sea stars, or even annelid worms. Now, let's talk about the next type of asexual reproduction. This is called budding. Budding is when a new organism actually grows on another organism and while it grows, it stays attached. And then when it is fully grown, it detaches from the parent organism. And again, because there is only one parent here, it is exactly genetically identical to the parent. Well, budding is very common when plants and fungi, but it can also happen in animals. And some examples of animals that this happens in are hydras and sponges. And that's all we have for today. Be sure if you haven't already, head on over to doodlingthrougheducation.com. Get those worksheets that go along with this video. There's four for this week. I think it'll really help to solidify these concepts of the different ways that animals reproduce. And so that is your homework for this week. And on that note, remember to be kind, follow God's will, and take care. Bye.